Hello everyone, so this is lecture 27 of our subject digital system design and the topic for today's lecture is programmable logic devices in which we will be covering two programmable logic devices that is ROM and PLA. So these are the contents, what are programmable logic devices, a basic introduction and then ROM as a PLD and PLA, PLA stands for programmable logic array, we will be checking one by one both of them. So in recent times when, I, when we are moving from small scale integration to medium scale integration, we will not be going to the very large, large scale and very large scale, but up to medium scale integration, these logic gates can be replaced by some more versatile logic blocks. So these logic blocks are, we can say that internally they will be having logic gates only, but instead of having, instead of V connecting gates, there will be set of gates which are already available in a block form. Okay. So that instead of making some complex connections between the gates, we will be making some simplified connections at the block level. Okay. So these are some blocks which are available to us as a programmable logic devices. So these are ROM, PLA, PL, CPLD and FPGA. So ROM as we are very much aware of that read only memory, which is of different types, PROM, PRO, EEPROM, mask PROM. So all these are type of different type of ROMs, these are theoretical aspects of that, but we have to cover these things in terms of programmable, programmable as programmable logic devices. So from theory point of view, we are very much aware that read-only memory is the basic storage in which there can be different types. If we are able to erase that, then it becomes erasable programmable read-only memory. If we are not able to erase that, then it is only programmable read-only memory. And if it is masked by the manufacturer and that neither we can write, neither we can neither we can write and neither we can erase. That means everything that has to be written in that memory has been written at the manufacturer's end. Then it becomes mask programmable, mask MPROM, mask programmable read-only memory because it has been masked for further writing by the user. Okay. So this is basic of ROM. Then PLA, PL, uh, both are interrelated. We'll be covering them one by one. Then CPLD, Although it is not in our syllabus, it is complex programmable logic devices which will be combination of further the previous PLAs and PL like blocks. Okay. And then in the end, we will be covering FPG. So this FPG and this PL, this will be the content of our next lecture. Okay. So for the timing, we will be focusing only on read only memory and then PLA, programmable logic array. So let's start with the read only memory. Okay. So, read-only memory consists of K input lines and N output lines. That means if my system requirements are such that there are K inputs and N outputs. For example, full header, there will be three inputs, two outputs. So, K is equal to three, N is equal to two. Okay, something like this. So, input lines are referred as address lines. So, those input lines will be termed as address lines and output lines are termed as data lines. So if there are k address lines, there are two raised to power k words. So if there are k address lines, then there are two raised to power k words, or these two raised to power k words can also be termed as there are two raised to power k products. Okay. And these products are generated by decoder. It is mentioned here ROM can be viewed as a combination circuit with AND gates connected as decoder. So Whenever we are designing any combination circuit, we basically need NOT, AND, and OR. These are the three basic gates by which we can design any simple circuit or a complex circuit. So those AND gates will not be used as separate components. Instead, those AND gates will be used as a part of a decoder. Okay. So this is the outer structure. There are K address lines. There are N data lines. Okay. <coughs> so K address lines and data lines. And further, what is the internal structure? This can be further broken down into this. So there are k address lines. These k address lines will be entering a decoder, which will be having two raised to power k and gates. Okay. So it will be generating products. These will be the main terms. So out of those main terms, which main terms are to be added? That num that depends my on my number of outputs. So if there are two outputs or there are these, we can say there are n outputs. So there will be n OR gates in this structure, n OR gates. This can be seen 
in the next slide like this. So, this we have seen this was the overall picture of the room, then we converted this into this picture in which there was a decoder which was having two raised to the power k AND gates and further this thing can be understood as these are my decoder outputs. So, these are decoder outputs and at the output of the decoder there are OR gates. So, which min terms need to be added? So, if I want to add m naught plus m 2, if I want to add m naught plus let us say m 1. So, m naught plus m 1 if I want to perform then I will close this switch and this switch and this will be open. Similarly, if I want to perform m naught plus m 2 k minus 1. So, in that case this switch will be closed, this switch will be closed and this switch will be open and in case I am only interested in m 1, I need only m 1 that means my third output is saying that y is equal to m 1 only, I need not to add anything. So, in that case this will be open, this will be closed and this will also be open because I only need m 1. Okay. So, this is how we are going to make the programmable connections. So, these OR gates are programmable now. Okay. Whenever we are preparing a logic device, programmable logic device, then we have to see which part of that logic device is programmable. That means, user can program it according to the requirement. Okay. So, and that programmability can be understood in terms of products or sum. So, we can see that the products are not programmable at all. These two raised to power k AND gates are fixed because it is a part of the decoder we cannot change the internal structure of the decoder. Okay. But that OR gate part is programmable. We can make or break these OR gate connections as per our requirement. So, if we say what are the basic programmable characteristics of ROM, we can say that ROM is having a fixed AND array and programmable OR array. Okay. That means, the inputs which are entering the AND array, we cannot control the functionality of the AND gates because AND gates are fixed inside the decoder, but we can control the programmable nature of the decoder outputs which are fed to the OR gate. That means, programmability is only in the OR array. Okay. So, this is the basic concept of ROM. Now, we can use this concept to design any kind of circuit. So, this is the general view of a programmed ROM. So, after programming how a ROM is going to look like? So, this is a ROM which is having 5 inputs. Okay. 5 inputs are there and there are 8 outputs and what is the relation? For 5 inputs we have to choose a decoder. Okay. Which decoder will be suitable for 5 inputs? That means, that will be definitely will be the decoder which is having 2 raised to power 5 outputs. That means, 5 cross 32 decoder is chosen, okay, which is having outputs from 0, 1, 2 up to 31. So, 32 outputs are there. Okay. So, out of those 32 products, decoder is generating the products only. Okay. If you go to the internal structure of the decoder, then that decoder is only the product of these inputs in various combination. That means, it will be generating all possible main terms. Okay. So, now whichever main terms are required by you as per your application requirement, you can simply choose those main terms and add them by using an OR gate. Okay. So, it this OR gate will be having 4 main terms. The 4 main terms are M0, M2, M3 and M29. There will be 4 product terms, which are entering this D7. Similarly, you can check any other gate. If you check this one, you can check that D2. This is for D2. This is for D2. D2 is having 3 crosses, which will is equivalent to this one, this and this. So, if your output is D2 is equal to this first term 0 plus 1 plus 2 or we can say m naught, m 1 and m 2, min term 0, min term 1, min term 2. So, these are the 3 min terms which will which further when added together will provide you the 
D2 output. So, similarly you can have any set of input and output. So, this is general programmed view of ROM. So, to have further clarity into the programming details of the ROM, now we will be preparing a separate circuit from scratch. Okay. So, let us say this is the question provided to us, which is saying design a combination circuit using a ROM that accepts a 2 bit number and generates an output number equal to the square of the input number. Okay. So, we have to check that what kind of connections are to be there and first of all we have to choose the decoder size. So, for 2 bit number decoder will be 2 cross 4 okay. and that 2 cross 4 decoder 4 outputs have to be added depending on the truth table. So, we will be preparing the truth table for a 2 bit squarer. So, let us say 2 bits are A, B and the square generated let us say. So, first of all we have to check that how many outputs will be there because the examiner has not given to me that for 2 bit number the square will be having this much bit. So, this you have to understand. So, square of 0 will be 0 that means minimum possible number square is 0 okay. and the highest possible square will be for this 1 1 3. So, 3 square is 9. So, 3 square is 9 and 9 requires 4 bits to in binary representation that means 1 0 0 1 that means we will be having 4 outputs in this system. So, S 3, S 2, S 1 and S 0. I have used S because we are denoting the square. Okay. So, 0 square will be 0, 1 square will be 1, 2 square will be 4 and 3 square will be 9. So, this is a table. Okay. Now, I can check that S 3, S 3 is equal to this 1 1, 1 1 corresponds to if I denote this as M naught, M 1, M 2 and M 3. So, momentum which momentum will be there? Third momentum. Similarly, S 2 will be equal to this corresponds to 2. Similarly, S 1 there is no momentum. So, S 1 is equal to 0 and for S naught there are 2 terms. Okay. There are 2 terms for S naught there are 2 terms which is 1 and 3. Okay. So, 1 and 3. Now, I have seen that there are 2 inputs A and B and there are 4 outputs S 3, S 2, S 1, S naught. So, the program ROM structure will be something like this. There will be 2 cross 4 decoder. 2 inputs will be A and B and 4 outputs will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So, you can check that S 3 we will be having 4 outputs. So, S 3 it will be requiring a sum. Okay. So, S 3 that means this thing. Similarly, for S 2 something like this S 1 S 1 is not connected anywhere. So, we can make something some connection like this. Okay. So, it is not connected anywhere. So, this is S 3, this is S 2, this is S 1 and now S naught 1 and 3. Okay. So, this is 1 and this is 3. So, we have to erase this actually because this wire has become a bit long. So, this will be your S naught. Okay. So, in this way we can design any circuit using ROM. Okay. First of all, we have to convert that description into a truth table. From the truth table, we will be able to easily identify the number of inputs and outputs and those corresponding to those inputs, we have to choose the decoder 
and corresponding to the number of outputs we have to choose the number of OR gates. Okay. So, for further clarification let us take one more example. Okay. Now, we are not provided with a description we are provided that a ROM is to be used to implement the boolean functions given below that means three outputs have to be implemented F1, F2 and F3 that means definitely they are going to be three OR gates this is clear to me. Okay. A, B, C, D that means there are four outputs so things are getting clearer okay there are four inputs that means the decoder size has to be 4 cross 16 so let's take a 4 cross 16 decoder the things which are getting clear let's convert them into a circuit so 4 cross 16 a b c and d there will be 16 outputs so these are 16 decoder outputs this is 4 cross 16 decoder so 0 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So, these are the 16 decoder outputs. Now, let us check we are also aware that there are going to be 3 OR gates. So, let us have 3 OR gates. So, these are going to be F1, F2 and F3. Okay. So, this is the outer picture. Okay. So, from that outer picture we can see that this F1 will be giving me two main terms corresponding to A, B, C, D that means 1, 1, 1, 1 and this A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar that means 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this becomes 0 and this becomes 15. So, ultimately it becomes M0 plus M15 which is also mentioned in this column. So, actually this is F1. So, I am using F1, this is F2 and this is F3. So, F1 is giving me, sorry, so F1, F2, F3 are correctly marked. Okay. So, this is F1 which is 0 and 15 and similarly F2 this A plus B we have to convert this we have to first convert it into canonical form and after into converting it into canonical form we can see that these are the set of min terms which will be generated by this which are corresponding to actually I am mentioning it here 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 13, 15. So, these are the set of min terms which are generated by this and for this we can check that there are two min terms 13 and 15, 13 and 15. So, the first function f 1 is 0 and 15. So, I will be using 0 and 15. So, this is 0 and this is 15. Okay. Similarly, for f 2 I am having 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then 13, 15. So, this is 13 and this is 15 and then for F1, sorry F3, F3 I am, I am having 13 and 15. So, this is 13 and this is 15. So, in this way we can prepare any structure using ROM. Okay. So, let us move to the next programmable logic devices which is PL. PL stands for programmable logic array. Like in PROM or ROM we had fixed AND array programmable OR array, but PLA will be giving me flexibility in terms of AND array will also be programmable OR array will also be programmable. That means, there will not be a decoder now. We will be using separate AND gates as per my requirement. Okay. 
So, there will be that same k inputs, those k inputs will be entering the AND array. Now, the AND array will be having multiple number of AND gates as per my requirement. Okay. So, it will be generating the products and those products will be summed by using OR array and the best thing is both AND and OR array, both are programmable now. Okay. So, this is really going to help me in designing the circuits. So, let us look at a clearer view of this PL or we can say simplified view of a PLA, how this PLA is going to look like. So, there are three inputs, okay. three inputs are there and these are actually denoting the negated version of the inputs and non-negated version. So, this is actually something like this this is if this is A, then this thing is giving A bar and this is giving A. We have to use this notation. Okay. So, instead of having two wires and separate NOT gate for one, I one wire to generate A bar, we are taking these two things from the single symbol. Okay. Similarly, for B, for C. So, number of inputs, as many number of inputs are there they will be converted into twice of the number, one the normal version, one the complemented version. So, A, B, C are there and A bar, B bar, C bar are also generated. So, for these inputs, I have to check how many products are required. So, that many number of AND gates. So, K AND gates. So, no, there are K inputs and let us say there are P AND gates. So, the number of programmable links here will be 2 raised to power k into p, 2 raised to power k, not 2 raised to power k, these k, 2 into k, actually these will be 2 into k, not 2 raised to power k, but 2 into k. Why 2 into k? Because there are k inputs and both are available in their complemented form as well. So, we are using 2 into 2k into p programmable links here. Okay. And then those p AND gates and the number of OR gates, number of OR gates are this. So, if there are m OR gates, so the number of programmable links in this OR array will be p into m. Okay. And after those, there will be some additional XOR based structures which are acting as conditional complement circuit. So, if my circuit requires that I should be performing the complement of a number, okay, then these can be used. So, if I have realized F bar and I need F, then I can use this or if I have realized F and I need F bar, I can use this arrangement. So, that this XOR gate we have already seen in our unit 1, it can act as control inverter. If we control one of the input of the XOR gate, we can use it as an inverter if that input is fixed to 1 and if that fixed input is 0, we can use it as a buffer. Okay. So, let us proceed further realizing logic functions using PLA. Okay. So, this is the question given to me f 1 is equal to this, f 2 is equal to this and I am asked to prepare a PLA based circuit for this. So, first of all, we I have to prepare the truth table. So, step 1 is preparing the truth table. So, for these three inputs a, b, c and these two outputs f 2, f 1, I have prepared the truth table. So, from this truth table, main terms I have fed into the k map, but the thing which we have to take care is that we have to solve k map for the complemented outputs as well. So, for F1, I have sold this K map, which is having main terms 3, 5 and 7. So, 3, 5 and 7 is giving me this and similarly for F1, there are 3 main terms, these are 4, 5 and 7. So, 4, 5 and 7, which is resulting in this, but I have to solve the K map for F1 bar as well. So, F1 bar, this is I am solving for F1 bar. Similarly, I will be solving for F2 bar as well. Okay. Then F1 bar will be having 1 here, 
which will result in this thing ok. So, this will be equivalent to the output will be equivalent to a bar plus b c bar. So, f 1 complement will be equal to a bar plus b c complement. Similarly, f 2 bar we have to solve for this one will be here ok. So, for this I will be having this pair this quad. So, it will be converting to c bar plus a bar b bar. So, I have to check that which arrangement will be giving me minimum number of products. So, between f 1 and f 2 I have to check products. So, if f I am f 1 I am taking in true form both are true or f 1 is true f 2 is false false means complemented output f 1 is false f 2 is true or both are false. So, in, in this case we can check that a b bar a c a c b c ok. So, in this way in this case I can see that a c is common in both f 1 and f 2 ok. A c is common in both f 1 and f 2. So, there are overall 3 products, but if I take f 1 and f 2 complement then there is nothing common then there will be 4 products. If I take f 1 complement ok f 1 complement and this is f 1 this is f 2. If I take f 1 complement that is a bar plus b c bar plus f 2 in true form a c b c that means there is nothing common then there will be 4 unique products and if both are false a bar plus b c bar c bar plus a bar b bar again there is nothing common. So, this arrangement is giving me minimum number of products that means f 1 and f 2 are to be used in their true form. So, if any other combination would have given me the minimum number of products I have to have preferred that combination. So, from that point of view I have chosen that there are 3 products a b bar a c b c 1 2 3 3 products are there first product is having this is a programming table first product is having a b bar. So, a is 1 b is 0 c is not there second product a c a is 1 c is 1 third product b c b is 1 c is 1 ok and the first product f 2 you can check that from here f 2 f 2 is a c plus b c. So, this is a c plus b c the second and third product similarly f 1 is having a b bar plus a c that means first and second and both f 2 and f 1 are in true form ok. They are not complemented that means we will be not using XOR gates. So, let us make the connections there are 3 inputs. So, there are 3 inputs a b and c there are 3 products first product is a b bar. So, this is a and this is b bar first product then the second product is a c this is a and this is c second product then third product is b c this is b and this is c this is third product and then so these products are ready now f 2 is the sum of second and third product. Okay. So, second and third product will be giving me f 2 and the first and this first and second will be giving me first and second will be giving me f 1 and further there are XOR gates which I am not going to use. So, I will be connecting 0 to these inputs. So, they will be remaining f 2 and f 1 only. So, if I would have needed the complemented version of that then I would have placed zeros on these XOR inputs ok. So, in this way we can design any circuit using PLA ok. So, with this we come to the end of the lecture. Thank you.